Hey everyone, Couch Investor here with another video for you today. In today's video, we're going to go over the top five stocks to buy in the month of July. So like in my last video, obviously there are going to be a couple of stocks I already made videos about that. So all of those will pop up right here. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, we're almost at 1000 subscribers. I think 80% or so of you aren't subscribed yet. So it will help a lot if you hit that subscribe button. And if you like the videos, consider leaving a thumbs up as it really, really helps me out grow the channel and get my videos out there. So without further ado, let's dive into this. All right, first up again is MGM. Like I said in my last video a month or so ago, the price is I think exactly the same thing as my last video. So obviously if you missed out in June, it's a must have in uh, July. Obviously the price was lower back in May and April and especially in March, but the price was also higher in the month of June. So if you, could, you, if you made a smart trade, you could have made I think 30% or so on your investment. But like I said, the price has gone down. We're going to see the graphs uh, real soon. But again, most casinos will reopen, obviously not at full capacity and with lots of restrictions, but it's good to see that at least they're reopening. So that drives in uh, some revenue. Let's look at the graph real quick. All right, so MGM, like I said, this stock was in my top five stocks to buy in the month of June and it still is. Why is that? Well, because as you can see, this was the time I released my last video right around here. The price was I think $18 or close to 18, 17 something. And that's exactly the price we're going to be at when the bell rings today. Same thing. I still believe the stock is going to go back to its all time highs, maybe by 2021. Obviously it will take time, but my thesis remained the same. As you can see, it respected everything I drew last time. My uptrend line respected perfectly. My little drawing right here saying it will go up and down, up and down, but move sideways on its way up. It's going to happen. Obviously, it went up a bit too fast first and then went all the way down, but bounced off my, off my uptrend line. And then I would, suggest, I would think it would go back up to around $18, $19 and go sideways and work its way up. So this is why I think it's one of the top five stocks to pick up uh, this month of July. All right, next up is Disney stock. Obviously, the company has taken a huge hit because most of their parks, I think all of their parks were closed up until now. Um, Tokyo is reopening its parks after, I think, a four month shutdown. I think some parks in uh, China as well might have reopened, but not obviously not fully. Disney had planned to reopen most of their parks by August, but obviously that's not going to happen nor in Orlando or in California because of the recent, let's say, second outbreak or so. And most of its workers are not happy with the way the company has put the safety guidelines. So I don't think those parks will reopen, but maybe in Asia, the parks will open slowly, but surely, which is great to see. And I think for the long term, Disney is a must have in your portfolio, whether it's because well, their parks are amazing and growing, I think every year or streaming service. I think the Disney brand is huge and there's still a uh, huge room to grow. All right. So Disney, the chart looks very, very strange. If you look at it like this, you can see lots of gaps. I've never seen that many gaps besides on the Tesla chart. We can see gaps in April, 2019, huge gap when it went up. We can see a gap here in November. We can see a gap obviously before the outbreak on the way down. And we can see two gaps right here on its way up, right around $110. And on its way down at around about $119, $117. Obviously all the gaps are filled besides the one right here when it went from 140 to 130 something back when the outbreak began. So Eventually this gap will get filled because we're going to go all the way back to our all time highs. Eventually I've drew a couple of lines right here, downtrend line, uptrend line, as you can see, downtrend line respected little resistance support line right here at $113. It will break that. Hopefully it will make a little baseline um, right here when it goes sideways and then work its way up. That would be a perfect scenario for us in the longer term. Again, if you want me to make a video specifically on the Disney stock, I would gladly do it. It's one of my favorite companies and my favorite places to go is Disney World. So 
I'm a strong believer and a strong believer that their streaming platform will be successful in the long term. But as of now, I think, well, if you bought it at 110, great price. If you bought it during the peak outbreak at around about $90 or so, I think, right here, 84 even, great price. And today is still a great price if you're looking at it on the longer term. All right, next up is Starbucks. Again, a stock that was in my top five buys for the month of June. It's actually cheaper right now. So obviously I, will, I would have to put it in the list. I've made an excessive video where I explain on the longer uh, term why I think Starbucks is a long-term buy. It's gonna pop up right here as well. Again, Starbucks stock really underappreciated. The price is lower than a month or so ago makes no sense because their stores are open. I think most of them are open. Obviously they're gonna close around 400 stores, but that does not mean it's bad for the company. It's a way for them to make even more money with less expenses, less liabilities. And for the long term, I think Starbucks will go back to its all time highs, which is around 35% gains from the price today. We're gonna look at the stock price analysis real quick. All right, so next up is Starbucks, another stock I've covered for my month of June and I made a new video about it a week or so ago. So basically a month or so ago, almost breaking out of the downtrend line. So obviously now the price is much lower. It bounced off our little support line right here at $71 or so, 72. And then it's going to make its way up, hopefully um, breaking that downtrend line and then making its way up if you're buying it today or this week let's say and it goes back to its all-time highs you are having a 35 percent gain um, give or take a percent or two i still think starbucks is a strong buy for the longer term obviously it will be more like a value stock like coca-cola for example because well their business is actually reopening already lots of people are picking up their coffees their little breakfast lunch whatever um, partner up with Beyond Meat, etc. I think for the longer term, this is a safe bet. And especially for the month of July, this is a must have for the long term as well. All right, next up is Invite. I made a comparison which stock is better, Invite or Illumina, to buy for the longer term. And I said it's going to be in, my, in this video as well. So if you want to go watch that, it's going to pop up right here. Invite right now is a bit oversold, so that's why I have a couple of exceptions for it. I've added an extra stock at the end of the video if you want to replace that one. Invite could go a bit lower and then I think would be a great pickup, but for the longer term, I think it's a winner. Obviously, it's not profitable yet, but Uber is not profitable, Lyft isn't, Tesla wasn't. All of those stocks have gone up and have huge potential in the future. We're going to look at the graph real quick. All right, so Invite, not much to add because, well, I've made a video about it a couple of days ago. So basically, like I said, this line right here at $28 is a resistance slash maybe potential support line for the next couple of weeks. Then if that breaks, we are going all the way back down to $20 because there's a huge gap right here. Like I said, not all gaps will get filled but there's a myth saying that all gap will get filled but that doesn't mean anything um, like we've seen with tesla not all gaps will get filled and then last resort is right here at 15 16 dollars or so like i said in my previous video now we're overbought so i would like the stock to go back down a bit to 28 dollars or so and create that little baseline like little base right here and then continue its way up that would make the RSI go down and will be much more relaxed with our investment. But like I said in my previous video, obviously if you can wait a bit and see the stock go back under its overbought status, great pickup. All right, so number five is going to be Facebook. Obviously Facebook is a stock I think you must have in your portfolio. It's like Apple and Microsoft, regardless of the price, I think Facebook is a must have in your portfolio. And with the current little scandals going on around the company, I think if we can see a drop again to the lower $200 or so, I think it's a must have in your portfolio. Today, it's right back up to the high 230, maybe $240. We're gonna see the graph real quick. But if let's say another scandal comes out with Facebook, because 
there is never enough scandals with Facebook, I think it's a good pickup for the longer term. We're gonna look at the graphs really quick. All right, Facebook. I have never seen a company that has a systematic year over year scandal. Um, well, if it's on privacy, if it's uh, election manipulation, or right now not doing anything to remove hate speech from their platform. This is why we can see that right around a couple of days ago, a week or so ago, the stock started to plunge, to go down from its all-time highs of 240 something dollars to around about $200, $205, because major companies like Verizon, uh, Starbucks, for example, and many, many more have retreated from Facebook and boycotted Facebook by not publishing any ads anymore. So no ad money for Facebook. Obviously, it did not really impact Facebook that much because I think it was less than 5% of their revenue gains or whatever. But the stock took a hit, obviously. But now, as we can see, it's already on its way up. So I drew a couple of lines, uptrend line, obviously, it's going to respect it right now. It's going to go all the way up back again. Support, strong support at um, $224. If something else happens um, besides a boycott and major support at $200 or so. If you had picked it up at $200 for a quick gain, a great, great pick. If you picked it up back during the outbreak, even better because um, you've made obviously almost double your money on that trade. But in the longer term, look, I would really want to be bullish and positive on Facebook, but it's really, really hard recently with all those scandals year over year. Really, it's on Mark Zuckerberg, actually. All right, my extra stock for you guys is Uber. At this price, at around about $30 or so, I think Uber is fairly priced. But in the longer term, that's a problem. For now, short term, we might see an upside with people getting maybe a bit more comfortable getting in Uber cars and especially with this rule right here saying that end drivers and passengers will have to wear a mask if they want to drive an Uber car. But in the longer term, I will have some issues with the stock because I think Tesla will take over uh, with their robot taxis and the autonomous fleet. We can see a tweet right here from Elon Musk. So if Uber, let's say, can work with Tesla saying they're buying like a fleet of Tesla and put it under the Uber name. They will have to pay, let's say, a platform fee to Tesla, but at least it will uh, generate some revenue from the rides. So it remains to be seen, but I think it will be a big problem in the long term. We're going to see the graphs real quick. All right. So Uber, obviously young stock, IPO'd last year. As we can see, its highest point was after its IPO, around about almost $50 or so, then went all the way down to around about $25 in November 2019, then managed to make its way up to $40 or so. But then the outbreak came and it went all the way down to $15, obviously losing 50 something uh, percent. But if you bought the lowest point, and the way the price is at now, you've, I think, made 100% on your investment. But over the long term, I think it could be a good play. But like I said, if Tesla is coming for those guys, I hope uh, Uber has an alternative plan or is uh, okay to work with Tesla. But in the short term, I would think Uber might be going a bit sideways because obviously people might not be that comfortable uh, getting in other people's car but as we just seen before um, you will have to wear a mask whether you're a driver or a passenger to enter an uber car so the price right now is pretty fair i would suggest there is a little support line right here 28 dollars bit of a resistance at around 33 to around about 35 dollars or so so that range of five dollars between 28 and 23 would be a good pickup price for the long term there you have it guys, those are my top 5 picks for the month of July, plus that extra one. Obviously, that does not mean you have to buy it right away, it just stocks to keep an eye on in the month of July, because I think the market will still be volatile, so great opportunities will still arise. So that will be all for this video, if you liked it, consider leaving a thumbs up, and if you haven't subscribed yet, maybe now is the time to hit that subscribe button. 
And as always, guys, take care, stay safe, and see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.